Hello everybody, off to research day. So more to come in a bit. Okay, I am here on the campus of UNLV. So one of the things I wanted to talk about since I'm here for the research day for physical therapy is the capstone project or at my institution, the terminal project. So since the physical therapy programs uh, for education, the schooling, it's three years and it's a doctoral degree. One of the requirements is you have to do research. So pretty interesting what I saw, what I heard, and I'll discuss it later after I hear the final four presentations. But basically, I just wanted to really reiterate, like, as far as research, it is important within physical therapy. As I've mentioned during one of my vlogs, how, like, movement is an art with physical therapy it's really difficult to do research and especially get the sample sizes that you need for whatever condition uh, it is that you're looking at uh, so i'll i'll discuss that more but basically i just wanted to touch upon that and if you have any questions or comments feel free to share and i will look at them i will answer them all right so have a good one see you in a bit Hey everybody, so just finished up with uh, watching all the presentations. So I'll talk a little bit about the format and then I'll go through sets of four uh, because I have notes. So basically, um, with the presenters, a lot of them, they did go to CSM Combined Sections Meeting, that annual national PT conference that I've been to, and they presented their posters and research there. Uh, so as far as this event, it was basically 15 minutes for PowerPoint presentations and then 15 minutes afterwards for a Q&A session. And of course the professors were asking questions as well as clinicians in the community. And uh, you know, it was part of their assignment, part of their grade. I didn't realize that until then, but it was, it was overall very interesting. So give me one sec and then I will burst through these sets of four and with my notes and then few, again, feel free to comment, ask questions, and whatnot. Okay, here we go. Okay, so first set of four. So for an acute care hospital in Washington, and hopefully this applies nationally, as far as readmission rates um, with hospital, especially for falls, one of the most important factors is medical diagnosis. There's probably some other things too that need to be teased out, um, but one of them is uh, being medically complex and like what exactly does that mean? And then for Parkinson's disease, there's treadmill training and it's pretty good. It's very useful to have a patient warm up because it primes the patient for activity regardless of on or off medications, especially levodopa. So the next one for gate for running with cues, trunk flexion. Basically, um, there's a few th things that you can change. Um, as far as the, the, the exact degrees, it's not really um, teased out completely. And then there's debating research out there whether or not it's cadence or foot strike that matters more for runners, especially newer recreational runners that are doing low mileage and still getting the hand th hang of things. So whether a top-down approach or a bottom-up approach with the lower extremity kinematic chain, it's, it's uh, not quite clear yet, but there's research out there for that. And then lastly, for active video games like We Balance Boards and Connect uh, the, on the Xbox, as far as doing a systematic review, especially for children with cerebral palsy, there aren't very good standards out there in the research. A lot of uh, the studies would be excluded because they're case studies and single subject. So it's important to get um, larger sample sizes and to have a standardized protocol and also have something that's a little bit uh, balanced between what a clinician wants as far as the task to perform or to customize the difficulty setting and decrease the uh, error rate to increase the success rate for the child and also to have it be fun and engaging. So okay, 
that's the first set of four. All right, so for the thoracic percussion test, it actually didn't show up as that reliable. There are certainly other ways that the procedure could be tested and the methodology could be teased out as opposed to having the patients uh, sitting or being asymptomatic and having the patients uh, lie in prone. And the, maybe the teaching session for how the novice clinicians are um, instructed with 30 minute sessions. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot that could go with that, but basically amongst the clinicians during the Q&A session, they were just thinking like, you know what, like throw out the thoracic percussion test or at the very least use a stethoscope or something to hear objectively what's going on rather than um, palpating and feeling the tension with, uh, you know, clinicians' hands. Okay, lots about that. Next one about uh, gait and osteoarthritis, deformation of the articular cartilage in the uh, patellofemoral joint, right? So basically with that, look at the tibiofemoral joint angle. And one of the concerns is with increase each incremental one degree increase in genu valgum there's increased risk for lateral uh, lateral OA and the deformation of the cartilage. So it's really up to the clinician to make that judgment call whether or not to walk with patients. But what was shown in this research study was that you know gait in and of itself was actually pretty good. And uh, just in terms of the pathophysiology and the mechanisms, it's good to get up and moving and to uh, stress the joint. It doesn't cause the deformation of the cartilage. It actually in promotes you know, increased circulation within that area. So that's that. And then for the EMG with a fine wire, um, one of the troubles was there needed to be surface EMG electrodes on the perspinal muscles on the right hand side for uh, comparison because on the left hand side was where the uh, fine wire technique was being used for those EMGs except it was it wasn't just having the fine wire in it was also fine wire in or fine wire out and then um, the other component um, in terms of testing those perispinal muscles isometric contractions were used to sort of account for the different patients, the different subjects. Rather than having a concentric or eccentric contraction or whether it's lumbar flexion or extension, uh, just isometric was the most feasible to uh, standardize with the research. And lastly, with wound care, acute care, there was definitely a difference between bedside nurses and the experts who are wound care PTs or wound care nurses at Sunrise, Ho Sunrise Hospital. There's definitely a difference in the reporting of whether or not a patient, a new admission, has has a some type of pressure injury. So pressure injuries are basically when you're sitting down for a very long time, and I mean like in the hospital and just not moving at all. Uh, so that's, that's one thing that hospitals control for because that's a hospital acquired injury and then Medicare wouldn't pay for that. But basically um, for the experts, their methodology, they use a photograph, digital photograph, and a wound care assessment tool, which I, I've seen personally and I actually have a copy of, the NE1 Nancy Estacado wound assessment tool, which displays pictures and then also using your clinical judgment to assess the patient, come through the patient history and examination to determine whether or not um, what stage that pressure injury uh, is. But bedside nurses, for them, uh, one of the limitations with the study is that they're doing it in real time and they don't have something to refer back to. Whereas for the experts, it was a panel. They all had 15 plus years of experience. So that's that. Second set of four done. And here comes the last set. All right, last set of four. Here we go. So with community dwelling elders, uh, one of the things to consider is 
vision because that's the typical uh, system that older as you age and your balance worsens it's one of the systems that you use to compensate the other two are proprioception how you feel out with your muscles in your joints and then uh, your vestibular system you know when you head shake and everything but uh, as far as visual system one of the things that came out of uh, this discussion this talk was that they used certain modifications of the tug outcome measure which is timed up and go go walk three meters turn around and come back and sit in a chair uh, one of the cool things about it is that they designed this force plate this modified force plate bench that sense detects when you are bearing down 90 percent of the weight through the the seat and then tracking the time between when that is no longer the case so when a patient gets up walks over turns around and sits back down and then stopping the time exactly when it's 90 percent uh, in the seat again to have a more objective measure for the tug rather than human error with using a stopwatch, which um, I've done and I, I can definitely attest to that. But anyways, for that, uh, one of the modifications that you really should be used since vision is, is a component that's pretty big for balance and de decreasing risk of falls is mod making a modification of the timed up and go test for vision as opposed to cognitive or mathematics and just counting down like by sevens like taking a hundred and subtracting by seven each time while you're walking and trying to keep up the time there uh, so there's that okay and then with acute care again except this time uh, BID twice a day treatments in the care plan for PT and the reason why there's no shows uh, there's a variety of different reasons but the biggest one is because of staffing and scheduling on the weekends and of course being in an acute care hospital there's multiple disciplines involved that warrant the patient needing to be there OT speech uh, doctors MRI scan you know x-rays surgery what have you but it was interesting uh, discussion nonetheless third with Alzheimer's and looking at uh, data from the Cleveland Clinic which is a very you know very prestigious place out here in the Las Vegas area working with neurological conditions and there's a huge battery of tests that goes into making that diagnosis one of the assessments that was used um, looking at the da data was the MOCA test which is the Montreal cognitive assessment test I've seen it used uh, with real patients where basically you can like draw a clock or like try to repeat a shape and you would be amazed what you would see with patients that are positive that really do have something going on. It's a highly sensitive test and you can look it up, MOCA. But anyways, looking at different quartiles for those scores for patients with Alzheimer's and then seeing different factors like their fall risk or their gait speed and whatnot. So their gait speed, there was a correlation there, a significant difference, statistically significant difference for um, walking slower. But as far as the other variables and factors, it wasn't as clear cut like um, fall risk, but you know, that's that. And then lastly, last but not least, anterior translation of the mandibular condyle TMJ, temporal mandibular joint, and using ultrasound, a linear ultrasound head, just placing it there, opening, closing the mouth, and looking at that data to have some objective measure for looking at the superficial structure, which is the lateral portion of the uh, condyle, and then just having some type of objective measure to look at that. It was actually pretty, pretty good, pretty interesting discussion there. The so in regards to statistics and like research, like the ICCs were really good. The correlation was actually pretty good, like R.7 or so, which is really good for a novel procedure. But um, overall, because of the arthrokinematics of the temporal mandibular joint and how it rolls and slides and medial and lateral glide and, and whatnot, and like what techniques you would use in the clinic as far as intervention, 
it's not as clear cut because there's multiple co components involved, not just the anterior translation. So there's things to tease out with that, but it was still promising having uh, some type of accessible device, an ultrasound head, and looking at it that way. But that's that.